Hello, welcome to Rygenix. In my last video, we discussed about Simple Factory. Today, we are going to discuss another creational design pattern, Factory Method. As mentioned earlier, before learning any design pattern, the concept of interface and polymorphism must be clear. In case, if you do not have clear understanding on interface and polymorphism, then I recommend you to watch my video on this first before watching any design pattern video. Also, if you know Simple Factory, then Factory method is almost similar to Simple Factory. I have discussed about Simple Factory elaboratively in my last video. If you would like to refresh your knowledge on this, the video links are available in the description. Consider subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to see all the simplified and excited videos on C-Sharp which will help you to be a better programmer. By end of this video, you will know what is factory method design pattern, what problem it tries to solve, what are the objectives of this pattern, and the advantages of this pattern. All this with a demo implementation. So let's start. What is factory method design pattern? Like simple factory, factory design pattern is also all about creation of object. So it falls under creational design pattern category. This is also one of the most commonly used Gang of Four design pattern and quite easy to understand. Gang of Four defines it as Define an interface for creating an object but let subclasses decide which class to instantiate. Factory method lets a class defer instantiation to subclasses. That simply means that you call a factory with a parameter and an instance of a class is created and given to you. You don't create the class yourself. The factory takes care of all that internally for you. What is required from your end is that you just need to know what argument to pass for each distinct class you want to create. Hmm, that sounds similar to simple factory, is it not? Let's see the diagram that we had created for simple factory in my last video. What I have just said is that client makes a request to factory for a product. Factory creates the products on client's behalf and gives it back to client. It means client directly refers to concrete factory class and helps by creating product. In our case, it was Samsung or Xiaomi. Now, let's say our application also wants to create a different models of Samsung and Xiaomi mobile. It means instead of doing new Samsung, we want to go one step deeper and instantiate a specific Samsung model that is new Samsung A9 or new Samsung Galaxy and for Xiaomi new Redmi or new Redmi Pro it means right now we have one factory but we need two factory and client should be able to swap these factories at runtime this is not possible with this design as we are bound to use only one type of concrete factory this can be achieved via factory method which allows client to refer to an interface rather than concrete implementation Let's see what changes we have to make to this diagram to adapt to factory method. So we need to create an abstract factory and instead of depending on concrete factory, let client depend on abstract factory method. Now this abstract factory can be an interface. Now if we update this diagram with a specific interface and classes that we are going to implement, then this would look like this. Now since the factory depends on interface, this means that we can have multiple implementation of the iMobile factory which essentially means we can have multiple factory. So what problem it tries to solve? Similar to simple factory, object creation is scattered and repetitive in various parts of the code. Client is coupled to any new type creation in the project. Now looking at the problem statement, the objective of implementing factory method should be to make our client unaware of the object instantiation, client should access the object through a common interface. Let's flip to Visual Studio and see how we can implement this. I will update the same simple factory application that we have created in our last video. So here we have product interface iMobile. We have two concrete product which implements iMobile and we have the concrete factory mobile factory which creates our concrete product Samsung and Xiaomi. Now let's update this application to factory method. First, let's start by renaming the class library to factory method. Product interface will keep as it is. For our main product classes, 
we are going one level deeper now and instead of having Samsung, we would like to have specific models of Samsung. So let's delete these classes and create new classes. Before creating the classes, let's create an enum model type. Now let's create different concrete model types. So here we have created four mobile models as of now, Samsung Galaxy, Samsung A9, Xiaomi Redmi 6, Xiaomi Redmi Pro. It implements our product interface iMobile. Now let's make changes to our factory. Simple factory depends directly on concrete factory whereas factory method allows to abstract the factory to one level up so that client is able to swap different factories at runtime. It means instead of having a concrete factory, we have to let our concrete factory depend on an interface so that we can have multiple factories implementing the interface and let client depend on the interface. So let's create a factory interface folder first. Let's create the factory interface. Now I hope you realize the difference between simple factory and factory method. In factory method we have additional factory interface which basically abstracts our factory class itself. Now let's create our concrete factories. Implement iMobile factory. Let's write a switch case to return a specific model type. If the model type is A9, then return Samsung A9. Similarly, let's create our other factory. That's it. We are done with our factory method design pattern implementation. Now let's see how client will use it. Let's add factory method class library reference to our client application. We will create Redmi Pro model using Xiaomi factory. Let's run this, we get the expected result. Now as mentioned, client can swap between other factories seamlessly. Let's use Samsung factory. So Samsung factory is used as expected. That's it for factory method implementation. I hope you understood the concept of factory method and how it is different from simple factory. Would appreciate if you can comment and let me know. In my upcoming video, we will also see how factory method is different from abstract factory. Now let's look at the advantages of factory pattern. The object creation processes are taken away from the client to the factory and thereby decoupling the client code with the object creation code. This in turn will help in reusability as this code can be used by other clients. It encapsulates the instantiation logic to a factory class so that the new keyword is not scattered around. It means it tells you that whenever you need to create an object, you ask factory. Now you might think that instead of asking factory to new up the class, you can also do it right. But the thing is that it is possible that the instantiation of the class depends on certain business logic. Now if you start writing all this in the client code, 
then basically you are giving more responsibilities to the client than it is required and essentially increase coupling. The factory pattern also helps in the scalability of the application or we can say that it makes your application polymorphic as the client code only refers to the interface which essentially means that you can swap the implementation at runtime by adding more product implementing the interface without making many changes in the client code. Code becomes more maintainable as the object creation is centralized. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If it did then please hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with others to see more such contents. Thanks.